This is a book reading from William Walker Atkinson's book, Thought Vibrations. Chapter 1, The Law of Attraction in the Thought World. The universe is governed by law, one great law. Its manifestations are multiform, but viewed from the ultimate, there is but one law. We are familiar with some of its manifestations, but are almost totally ignorant of certain others. Still, we are learning a little more every day. The veil is being gradually lifted. We speak learnedly of the law of gravitation, but ignore that equally wonderful manifestation, the law of attraction in the thought world. We are familiar with that wonderful manifestation of law, which draws and holds together the atoms of which matter is composed. We recognize the power of the law that attracts bodies to the earth, that holds the circling worlds in their places, but we close our eyes to the mighty law that draws us to the things we desire or fear, that makes or mars our lives. When we come to see that thought as a force, a manifestation of energy, having a magnet-like power of attraction, we will begin to understand the why and wherefore of many things that have heretofore seemed dark to us. There is no study that will so well repay the student for his time and trouble as the study of the workings of this mighty law, of the world of thought, the law of attraction. When we think we send out vibrations of a fine ethereal substance, which are as real as the vibrations manifesting light, heat, electricity, magnetism, that these vibrations are not evident to our five senses is no proof that they do not exist. A powerful magnet will send out vibrations and exert a force sufficient to attract to itself a piece of steel weighing 100 pounds, but we can neither see, taste, smell, hear, nor feel the mighty force. These thought vibrations, likewise, cannot be seen, tasted, smelled, heard, nor felt in the ordinary way, although it is true there are on record cases of persons peculiarly sensitive to psychic impressions who have perceived powerful thought waves and very many of us can testify that we have distinctly felt the thought vibrations of others, both whilst in the presence of the sender and at a distance. Telepathy and its kindred phenomena are not idle dreams. Light and heat are manifested by vibrations of a far lower intensity than those of thought, but the difference is solely in the rate of vibration. The annals of science throw an interesting light upon this question. Professor Elisha Gray an eminent scientist says in his little book, The Miracles of Nature, There is much food for speculation in the thought that there exist sound waves that no human ear can hear and color waves of light that no eye can see. The long, dark, soundless space between 40,000 and 400 trillion vibrations per second and the infinity of range behind 700 trillion vibrations per second where light ceases in the universe of motion makes it possible to indulge in speculation. M. M. Williams, in his work entitled Short Chapters in Science, says, There is no gradation between the most rapid undulations or tremblings that produce our sensation of sound and the slowest of those which give rise to our sensations of gentlest warmth. There is a huge gap between them, wide enough to include another world of motion, all lying between our world of sound and our world of heat and light. And there is no good reason whatsoever for supposing that matter is incapable of such intermediate activity or that such activity may not give rise to intermediate sensations, provided there are organs for taking up and sensifying their movements. I cite the above authorities merely to give you food for thought, not to attempt to demonstrate to you the fact that thought vibrations exist. The last named fact has been fully established to the satisfaction of numerous investigators of the subject, and a little reflection will show you that it coincides with your own experiences. We often hear repeated the well-known mental science statement, thoughts are things, and we say these words over without consciously realizing just what is the meaning of the statement. If we fully comprehended the truth of the statement and the natural consequences of the truth back of it, we should understand many things which have appeared dark to us and would be able to use the wonderful power, thought force, just as we use any other manifestation of energy. As I have said, when we think we set into motion vibrations of a very high degree, but just as real as the vibrations of light, heat, sound, electricity. And when we understand the laws governing the production and transmission of these vibrations, we will be able to use them in our daily life, just as we do the better known forms of energy. 
that we cannot see, hear, weigh, or measure these vibrations is no proof that they do not exist. There exist waves of sound which no human ear can hear, although some of these are undoubtedly registered by the ear of some of the insects, and others are caught by delicate scientific instruments invented by man. Yet there is a great gap between the sounds registered by the most delicate instrument and the limit which man's mind, reasoning by analogy, knows to be the boundary line between sound waves and some other form of vibration. And there are light waves which the eye of man does not register, some of which may be detected by more delicate instruments, and many more so fine that the instrument has not yet been invented which will detect them, although improvements are being made every year and the unexplored field gradually lessened. As new instruments are invented, new vibrations are registered by them, and yet the vibrations were just as real before the invention of the instrument as afterward. Supposing that we had no instruments to reg register magnetism, one might be justified in denying the existence of that mighty force because it could not be tasted, felt, smelt, heard, seen, weighed, or measured. And yet the mighty magnet would still send out waves of force sufficient to draw to it pieces of steel weighing hundreds of pounds. Each form of vibration requires its own form of instrument for registration. At present, the human brain seems to be the only instrument capable of registering thought waves, although occultists say that in this century, scientists will invent apparatus sufficiently delicate to catch and register such impressions. And from present indications, it looks as if the invention named might be expected at any time. The demand exists and undoubtedly will soon be supplied. But to those who have experimented along the lines of practical telepathy, no further proof is required than the results of their own experiments. We are sending out thoughts of greater or less intensity all the time, and we are reaping the results of such thoughts. Not only do our thought waves influence ourselves and others, but they have a drawing power. They attract to us the thoughts of others, things, circumstances, people, luck, and accord with the character of the thought uppermost in our minds. Thoughts of love will attract to us the love of others. Circumstances and surroundings in accord with the thought, people who are of like thought. Thoughts of anger, hate, envy, malice, and jealousy will draw to us the foul brood of kindred thoughts emanating from the minds of others. Circumstances in which we will be called upon to manifest these vile thoughts and will receive them in turn from others. People who, man who will manifest in harmony and so on. A strong thought or a thought long continued will make us the center of attraction for the corresponding thought waves of others. Like attracts like in the thought world, as ye sow, shall sail, so shall ye reap. Birds of a feather flock together in the thought world. Curses like chickens come home to roost, bringing their friends with them. The man or woman who is filled with love sees love on all sides and attracts the love of others. The man with hate in his heart gets all the hate he can stand. The man who thinks fight generally runs up against all the fight he wants before he gets through. And so it goes, each gets what he calls over the wireless te telegraphy of the mind. The man who rises in the morning feeling grumpy usually manages to have the whole family in the same mood before the breakfast is over. The nagging woman generally finds enough to gratify her nagging propensity during the day. This matter of thought attraction is a serious one. When you stop to think of it, you will see that a man really makes his own surroundings, although he blames others for it. I have known people who understood this law to hold a positive, calm thought and be absolutely unaffected by the inharmony surrounding them. They were like the vessel from which the oil had been poured on the troubled waters. They rested safely and calmly whilst the tempest raged around them. One is not at the mercy of fitful storms of thought after he has learned the workings of the law. We have passed through the age of physical force onto the age of intellectual supremacy and are now entering a new and almost unknown field, that of psychic power. This field has its established laws and we should acquaint ourselves with them or we will be crowded to the wall as are the ignorant on the plains of effort. I will endeavor to make plain to you the great underlying principles of this new field of energy which is opening up before us that you may be able to make use of this great power and apply it for legitimate and worthy purposes just as men are using steam, electricity, and other forms of energy today. End of chapter one.